Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. We are just past the trade deadline in the 2033 season, and it's been a very successful season on the diamond for the Buffalo Wings. 65-40 and 40 record, uh, second best in all of baseball, just a game behind the Toronto Blue Jays. We've got a seven-game lead on the Nationals and a seven-and-a-half-game lead on the Pirates for the NL East. And we have a six-and-a-half-game lead on both the San Diego Padres and the San Francisco Giants for the best record in the National League. So anything less than an NL East title and the best record in the National League at this point would be a bitter disappointment for our Buffalo Wings and uh, being just a game behind Toronto for the best record in baseball certainly feel like we should basically be in a coin flip situation to hopefully end this 2033 season with the best record in baseball so the uh, goals in front of us are quite obvious make the playoffs for a sixth consecutive season uh, win the NL East again and have the best record in the National League for a second consecutive season. And before we get into the episode, just wanted to uh, cover three things, uh, a couple of which I meant to cover at the end of the last episode, and then one new item based on feedback and comments from the last episode. Uh, first, and you may have seen this at the end of our last episode, the uh, brilliant young pitcher, Sincere Shazir, was the NL Rookie of the Month, uh, putting up a 4 and one record with a 159 ERA, and the number 23 prospect in baseball uh, looks like he is potentially on his way to becoming a somewhat unlikely ace for us. 5-2 uh, and two with a 241 ERA, and 63 strikeouts in his first 56 innings of major league action. Kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of his career from Sincere Shazir is Shohei Otani, who recently started a rehab assignment in AAA after suffering a torn labrum late last season. Uh, we just got our scouting report on him, and it appears with very high scouting accuracy that he is done as a pitcher. Uh, these ratings certainly don't indicate that uh, he's going to be a successful major leaguer at the age of 39. We had held out a little bit of hope that he might be an effective pitcher, but didn't really expect that. It was really just hope. The reason we signed him to the contract and the reason we've kept him around is our belief that he still could be a somewhat useful uh, bat against right-handed pitching. And although his contact is below average at this point, uh, still has above average home run power and a slightly above average eye. So I think he could still be a useful bat off the bench for us. Um, he has just begun that rehab assignment in AAA, and we're actually not going to switch him from being a two-way player yet, um, simply because that'll allow us to keep him down there for 26 more days rather than only 16 more days. Uh, with his profile, he doesn't have an obvious roster spot for us. Um, certainly think he will be in the mix to be uh be on the team in September certainly and likely when we go down to only 12 pitchers for the playoffs we'll likely find a spot for him on the uh roster and depending how he hits in this rehab assignment in AAA uh it's very possible that he could even be a starter for us against right-handed pitching uh but off to a bit of a slow start with five strikeouts in his first 10 at bats just one hit but he has not uh, played baseball in quite some time, so uh, we're going to let him rehab for the time being since we don't particularly need him right now. And the last thing I wanted to address is a, a great point that I didn't think of uh, at the end of the last episode, that uh, both Stanley Rosella and Holdor 
which I think is a Game of Thrones reference, which I like, uh, suggested that uh, when we had put Andres Medina into the lineup as a DH to ensure that he was getting regular playing time, uh, it would actually make sense to play Medina at catcher and move Rutschman to DH to give Rutschman a little bit of a rest at his advanced age. And it also acknowledges that Andres Medina is a better defensive catcher than Ashley Adley Rutschman at this point. So makes total sense. Uh, thanks to the two of you for that suggestion. Uh, that change is made. And uh, we will see how those two players and the rest of our Buffalo Wings perform over these last couple months of the season. Uh, we've got games against San Francisco, who I mentioned is uh, one of the teams that's only six and a half behind us in the National League coming up at home, followed by a four-game set against the Miami Marlins. So uh, could be a good opportunity here for us to hopefully take at least two out of three against San Francisco and uh, continue lowering the chance that they will be able to catch us for the best record in the National League. And then certainly against a Marlins team with a losing record would uh, certainly hope that we can take three out of four there against them at home. And we ended up doing even better than we could have hoped. Uh, we swept San Francisco and we swept Miami. So we have won our first seven games of this month of August. Uh, taking a look at the standings, uh, we're now up nine and a half on both the Nationals and the Pirates. And it looks like they are both a bit ahead of the Padres and the Giants in the standings. So that means we are also uh, nine and a half up for the best record in the National League. And we're actually two games up on Toronto at this uh, point for the best record in baseball. So certainly a great start to the month of August for our Buffalo Wings. And we extended our winning streak to nine, taking the first two in Montreal. Uh, but since then, we've lost four in a row on the road uh, to the Expos and then the Braves. So uh, actually, it's made the standings a little closer. Uh, Pittsburgh has been on a great run. They've closed the gap to six and a half on us. And um, we are back in a flat-footed tie with the Blue Jays for the best record in baseball here at the middle of August. And it's been a very streaky month for our Buffalo Wings. Uh, we snapped that four-game losing streak with five wins in a row uh, before losing the final game of this past week against Detroit. Uh, now we've got four at home against Pittsburgh and three at Montreal before we uh, finish off the month of August with three at the New York Mets. Uh, lead back up to eight and a half on Pittsburgh, and certainly um, looks like they also have the second best record in the National League at this point in our eight and a half games behind us. So certainly um, we've cut our magic number down to 31, and I uh, would love to take two out of three against Pittsburgh at home here. Uh, not going to clinch the division for us yet, obviously, uh, but certainly putting them a further game back in the standings and getting three more games uh, in the books would be a uh, nice start to this upcoming week for us as we try to uh, finish off the month of August with a pretty good record. And some of you probably noticed I was not good at uh, looking at things quickly. It was actually a four-game series against Pittsburgh and three against Montreal. I think I may have had that backwards, but um, we ended up sweeping four games against Pittsburgh, the team that was closest to us in the standing. So obviously that's a huge step forward in our goal to win the division again and have the best record in the National League again. Uh, although we've lost the first game of the homestand uh, against the Expos, or I guess more accurately, the first game of the final series of the homestand against the Expos uh, here on August 26th. Uh, we still have an 11 and a half game lead in the division. Uh, looks like an 11 and a half game lead for the best record in the NL. And we are up two games on Toronto for the best record in baseball. Uh, taking a quick look at the NL leaderboard, uh, Deshaun Seifu still hitting over 300. 
uh, up over 50 steals. Looks like he is going to once again lead the National League in steals. Uh, Mike Heiner, the outstanding rookie, uh, third in the league with a 918 OPS. And then Chris Sobotka is leading the league with 14 wins, has a 248 ERA, which is second best in the league. And he is second best in the league with a 5.1 pitcher war. Uh, given that Jamie Hayes has got a sub-2 ERA, is second in the league and wins, and has a war that's higher than Sabatka's. Uh, Sabatka's still going to need to do some great pitching over the last five weeks of the season or so to uh, get past Jamie Hayes in a likely battle for the uh, NL Cy Young Award. But having a nice season there. And Bryce Miller is tied for the league lead in saves with Dan Bush of the Marlins. And Otani's rehab assignment is up. Uh, we were able to easily get a spot for him because the nice pitcher of ours, Jorge Carrillo, has uh, got mild shoulder inflammation that's going to impact him for a week. Uh, fortunately, he's still got uh, minor league options yet, so we are just going to bench him for the week, send him to AAA, and uh, that lets us get Otani up and on the 26-man roster. We'll be short a pitcher uh, until September call-ups on September 1st. Uh, we have removed Otani from uh, being a two-way player, although we still are uh, force starting him as a starting pitcher, which we don't want to do. Uh, looks like I'll have to uh, change the setting there um, because I still have him from when we were forcing him as a starter in the minors. Um, started to hit a little bit better in the minors i mean he couldn't have been worse than that 100 batting average he had in his first 10 at bats four homers and 88 at bats uh hitting just 205 down there uh but still think that there's a chance that he'll be able to uh hopefully to hit a couple of uh nice relatively big pinch hit home runs home runs for us uh down the stretch of the season uh, I don't think he's a starter for us at this point, but I do think that that is a dangerous left-handed bat for us to have on the bench and uh, as some depth if we do have some injuries going forward. And another month for the Buffalo Wings is in the books and another rookie is being honored. Uh, Mike Heiner's had a great month before. We talked at the beginning of this episode about Sincere Shazier. And then Joe Edwards um, hit 303 with seven doubles, five home runs, scored 20 runs, and drove in 23. Uh, the additional seasoning that he got in AAA this year, although he wasn't happy to be down there, um, is definitely helping him to be much more productive in the majors this year since we brought him up 302 average and 10 home runs and 162 at-bats. He's also walked 28 times on base percentage, well over 400, OPS of 951, and a 2.1 war in 45 games. So uh, Edwards uh, definitely raking uh, thus far. He's still got a month to go in this regular season. We are to September roster expansion. Uh, taking a look at the schedule for the month of August, still remain pretty streaky. Uh, we lost a second straight game to Montreal, then won games against them and the Mets before losing our final two of the month. Even with the streakiness, uh, when all was said and done, it was a pretty good month for our team, 20-9. and nine. Uh, So we've had our two best months of the season in July and August. Hopefully we can keep that going in September. And the 85-49 and 49 record that we have here on September 1st, two games ahead of expectations. Uh, that said, as you can see, we are second in the National League in runs scored and uh, in the top half of every offensive category except for home runs where we're tied for 10th. Uh, Pitching-wise, we're second in runs allowed, second best starter ERA, first best ERA overall, and you can see we are in the top half of all but one pitching category. Uh, strikeouts is the only one where we're not in the top half of the league. 
second in defensive efficiency, fourth in zone rating. Uh, so obviously with one month to go, an incredibly successful season, uh, the lead has been cut to eight and a half over Pittsburgh for the NL East and the best record in the NL. They've won six in a row at this point. Uh, still think with an eight and a half game lead on September 1st and a magic number of 21, certainly should be able to hold them off. And it looks like we are up two and a half on the Blue Jays at this point for the best record in baseball. So certainly as the month of September begins, uh, the goal is certainly to get to 100 wins and hopefully have the best record in baseball when the regular season finally comes to an end. And since we had already added Otani to the roster, we had been running with uh, 12 pitchers and 14 position players. So with the two players that we've added to the Major League roster here on September 1st are both uh, pitchers. Matthew Wenzel, who we picked up in the trade right before the trade deadline with the Giants, uh, was not great in Albany. One and two record, five saves. Um, seven walks in 10 innings pitched, uh, but he probably wasn't thrilled to be down there. So we'll have him uh, up in the majors for the first time with Buffalo. And then we also um, brought Jorge Carrillo back up. Uh, we had just stashed him on the Albany roster while he was a little bit banged up, uh, but he is healthy now and hopefully ready to contribute down the stretch as we try to push to, as I talked about, uh, get to not just the uh, best record in baseball, but we'd also like to get to 100 wins at this point, uh, which would necessitate uh, going 15 and 13 or better down the stretch. And certainly with the way that we have uh, played this year, a 15 and 13 record over the final month plus of the season seems well within our capabilities. And we ended up taking two of our first three in September, uh, the hard way against the White Sox, uh, going on the road for three games against the A's, and then we are back home for three against Chicago uh, before a road trip at Arizona and St. Louis. Uh, home stand against the Braves and then back on the road against Miami and Philadelphia before finishing up uh, September 30th home against Washington and then that series will bleed over into the first two games of October and uh, then the regular season will be over. Uh, the lead is nine and a half and the magic number is down to 17. And Deshaun Seifu just hit a monster week, hitting 538, 14 for 26, scored four runs, and he has his batting average up to 321. And uh, what that means is that in addition to likely leading the National League in stolen bases again, uh, Seifu is in a battle right now for the first batting title of his career, uh, hitting 321. You can see he's uh, two points behind Joel Nelson of the Expos and two points ahead of Curtis Mead of Colorado. Uh, the lead is up to 13 and a half. Uh, wings absolutely on fire with eight wins in a row. Uh, we're up five on Toronto for the best record in baseball. Magic number down to seven. Uh, obviously, everything going extremely well for our Buffalo Wings now. Just a matter of uh, hopefully staying healthy these last three weeks of the season. And another good week is in the books, and the Wings have won the National League East for the second consecutive season, uh, the third time in our team history. Uh, the record stands at 97 and 52 right now, 15 and a half up on the Pirates. Uh, we are only up three on the Blue Jays for the best record in baseball. They've won seven in a row and nine out of ten at this point. Uh, certainly hope that we can continue to hold them off. 
Uh, Seifu remains in a battle with Nelson for the NL batting title in the final couple weeks of the season. Uh, looks like he will ultimately easily lead the league in stolen bases again. And then turning to pitching, uh, Sabatka tied for the league lead in wins with Hayes, uh, but he's trailing Hayes pretty significantly in ERA, and he's now behind both Hayes and Dover in terms of pitcher war. Dor Dover is uh, leading the National League in strikeouts, so um, excellent year by our uh, ace, Sabatka. Looks like there's a realistic chance that he will lead the league in wins, um, or at least be tied for the league lead in wins more accurately for a second consecutive season. Uh, the 15-1 and one record is definitely glittering. Uh, as I said, not that long ago, the goal now is just to uh, get this team into the playoffs healthy. Certainly with the 97-52 and 52 record, though, and uh, 13 games left in the season, would hope that uh, we are able to top the 101 wins uh, that we had in 2028 and have the most successful regular season in the winning in, in the uh, history of the Buffalo Wings when uh, this year is done. And then after that, as we've talked about much over this season, it'll be nice to have a sixth consecutive playoff appearance, but uh, we've made it as far as the NLCS three times now and certainly feel like this team uh, is ready to make it to a World Series. And if we make it to the World Series and are fortunate enough to get there, uh, certainly going to hope that we can win it all this season as well. And heading into the final week of the season, uh, after that great start to the month of September, uh, definitely been a little streakier. Uh, we lost three of four at home against Atlanta. Uh, we did take two out of three against Miami. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, uh, we've got the final three games of the road for the season at the Phillies, an off day on Thursday, and then we will finish up with three at home against the Nationals. Uh, so six games to go. Uh, we've gotten to our 100 wins. We have clinched the best record in the National League. Uh, two games up on the Blue Jays for the best record in baseball. And we are also uh, two games away from the winningest season in the history of the Buffalo Wings franchise. Uh, Seifu looks like he's going to hit 300 for the year, which will be nice, uh, but not going to win the batting title. Uh, 15 points, pretty hard to overcome in six games unless he is absolutely on fire. Uh, looks like, of course, he will lead the league in steals again. Uh, Sabatka looks like he'll be second or third in ERA, still tied for the league lead in wins potentially for a second straight year. Uh, Bryce Miller second in saves, and Sabatka third in pitcher war here as we head into the final days of this regular season. And we took two out of three against the Phillies uh, to get to 102 wins. Uh, so we do at this point have the winningest season in the history of the Wings franchise. Uh, we're three up on the Blue Jays right now. So one more win will clinch the best record in baseball for us and ensure that uh, we will have home field advantage in any series that we play this upcoming postseason. And we did get the win against Washington on the final day of September, uh, so we will have the best record in baseball this year. Uh, Bryce Miller, our closer, 11 for 11 in save opportunities, 17 strikeouts and 16 innings to win the National League Pitcher of the Month award. Uh, at this point, we just want to uh, set up the rotation, even though we are going to have an off series. Um, decent amount of time for pitchers to rest up. Uh, we're not really playing for anything at this point um, and want to just kind of make sure that uh, there's no surprising injuries. Uh, Sabatka has lost a game to go to 16-2. and two. I guess there's an argument since he's going to pitch today to uh, see if he can maybe lead the league in wins. Um, he's tied with Jamie Hayes at 16. He was tied, I think possibly with Hayes a year ago at 
uh, no, it was two years ago that Hayes left. So uh, he outpitched him this past year. It looks like or in 2032, he won more games than him. Um, we're going to actually let Sabatka pitch today. Give him a chance to get a 17th win in his 34th start of the season. And Sabatka did get his 17th win to go to 17-2. and two. Uh, We did have a injury. Jaden Hilaire, the Rule 5 acquisition, uh, working out of the pen, only pitched uh, 12 pitches, and it looks like he uh, may be banged up. Um, certainly not optimal to lose him, but would much rather lose him than a uh, more important starter for us. So 104 wins at this point for the Buffalo Wings as we head into the final game of the season and uh, we are going to make some changes here um, the young number two starter sincere shazir is set to go uh, but we're going to pitch somebody else for him uh, shazir got to 10 wins this year 10 and 3 record 238 era more than a strikeout per inning as a rookie uh, he's durable but um we're not going to push the envelope with our young budding ace and uh doesn't really matter if he has 10 wins or 11 wins didn't play a full year in the majors um but we will let somebody else pitch game 162 and ensure that um sincere shazier who will likely be pitching in uh, game two of whatever uh, whoever our opponent is in the nlds um, is well rested behind uh, sabatka who will be pitching the opener and for a second straight year we are going to bring up the young prospect isidro ochoa to pitch game 162 for us uh, he's the number 87 prospect in baseball uh, he was more successful this year in Albany than a year ago. He was 5-9 and nine last year with a 468 ERA, 458 Sierra, and a 1.5 war. Uh, this year he was 14-10, and 10, um, the ERA 452, although he did strike out over 200 batters. He unfortunately also allowed more than 200 hits. Uh, but he took his whip down by 20 points, uh, his Sierra down by almost a full run, put up a 3.8 war. Um, above average in terms of his ERA plus and FIP minus. Uh, he only went three innings for us in game 162 a year ago. Uh, hopefully we can get a little more out of him today. And uh, then as I talked about, we'll have Sabatka and Shazir set up to go in uh, games one and two of the NLDS in about a week. And we did lose the final game of the season, three to nothing. Uh, it does say in the headline here that Ochoa pitched well enough to win, but did not. Um, so uh, good to see a better performance out of him. And he went eight innings for us, uh, nine hits allowed, no walks, struck out six, three earned runs allowed. Noriega came on uh, to get the final three outs for us in the loss um ochoa named the player of the game uh so nice to see him do better than he did uh in his one game this year than he did a year ago also pitched better in triple a i don't think he's ever going to be an ace for us um but he is getting to the point uh, especially now as a 24 year old where he should certainly be in the mix for a spot uh at the back end of our rotation next season. So nice to see him uh, finish off the season with a solid performance in the loss. 104 in 58 record for Buffalo this year. Uh, the best record in baseball, best season uh, in the history of the Buffalo Wings as far as the regular season. Uh, Seifu did end up hitting 311, uh, led the National League with those 67 stolen bases. Um, so a sixth consecutive season as the uh, NL stolen base king and uh, the biggest total he's had in the last three years. Uh, looks like upping his uh, frequency a tiny bit there uh, did help over the second half of the season. And uh, his proficiency in terms of his stolen base percentage was the best that it's been in these past three seasons. Also, 
and by quick uh, back of the math, math, back of the envelope math, uh, had a better percentage than in 2030 also, and a better percentage than he did in 2029, just barely as well. Um, so, looks like the only seasons uh, in his career where the 28 and now 29 year old Seifu was more efficient on the base paths were the uh, first few seasons of his career. Um, so a nice performance by Mr. Seifu this season. 99 runs scored, 51 doubles, 10 triples, and the league best 67 steals to go with his 311 batting average. Uh, the rookie Mike Heiner. Uh, third in the National League, as we talked about, with the 902 OPS. Uh, love the fact that we've got him signed to a long deal. Uh, 309 batting average this year, 31 doubles, 25 homers, 91 ribbies, um, 144 WRC plus. Would have to think that Heiner will be getting a, a lot of votes for Rookie of the Year. Uh, Sabatka and Hayes ended up tied for the league lead in wins, um, so a second straight year leading the National League, or more accurately, he was tied for the National League lead in wins both of those seasons. Um, second in the NL with that 275 ERA, third in the National League in pitcher war, and Bryce Miller, after winning the National League Pitcher of the Month, is going to end up uh, second in the National League in saves with 48 on the 2033 season. And obviously we will do our usual deep dive on the statistics and the performances of all of our players and uh, how they may fit or not fit into our plans next season uh, in a few episodes, hopefully after we win a World Series. But we'll have to see what happens on that front. But I wanted to check in on a couple of our key additions down the stretch. Uh, start with Big Baby Medina. Uh, finally reunited back in Buffalo. I uh, ended up playing 35 games for us. So we got him in the lineup as a uh, backup to Rutschman and or our starting uh, catcher against left-handed pitching reasonably frequently over the um, a little less than three months that we had him. Uh, hit just 243. Um, did drive in 15 runs and have four homers and 115 at-bats. Below average offensively, uh, but still generated um, almost a win above replacement level. Uh, still interesting to see whether his bat can develop a little bit more. At the age of 26, it's certainly unlikely, uh, but we love his personality. We love his glove. We love his durability. At the very least, we think he could be a uh, useful backup catcher for us for hopefully years to come. And uh, feel pretty good about the fact that in his first uh, season and a half in the majors with Philadelphia, they only got him 149 at-bats. Uh, we got him 115 at-bats in less than half a season. So at least we were trying to get him some playing time to uh, hopefully get that last little bit of development to happen. Uh, Joe Edwards slowed down after the torrid pace that he was on um, when he first came up again this year. Ended up hitting 254 for us with a 369 on base percentage, OPS over 800, uh, 11 doubles and 14 homers and 260 at bats. Uh, so 41 homers on the year combined between AAA Albany and the big leagues. 132 WRC plus and a two war for him. Uh, certainly expect that the number 97 prospect in baseball will be a big part of any uh, playoff push we make this year and hopefully for uh, many seasons to come. Miguel Vargas uh, picked him up to be a utility infielder near the uh, end of the trading period. And he did a nice job for us. Hit 308 and 65 at bats, um, 138 WRC plus. Not a guy getting regular playing time, uh, but still was an upgrade over Henry Allen. And then last but not least, we'll check in on Otani. And uh, did not get regular playing time with us in the month of September. Only 13 at bats. 
two hits, both doubles, only one walk, batting average a buck fifty four, um, well below average offensive player and below replacement level when all is said and done. Uh, still think there's a pretty decent chance that he will end up on the playoff roster. Uh, but you can see the latest scouting report. We think even against right-handed pitching, his uh, home run power is not quite as good as we thought it was just a month, uh, month and a half ago. So um, clearly nearing the end for Otani, and it will be a question of whether he ends up on the playoff roster or not. But it's uh, Good that we are in a position where Otani is healthy enough to at least be in the mix. And our uh, Buffalo Wings have been successful enough this year to get into the playoffs. And uh, perhaps most importantly, when we uh, look at the team and our roster, um, everyone is healthy at this point except Jade and Hilaire still waiting to hear about that injury from the uh, fragile Rule 5 acquisition. Uh, certainly not going to be great if we lose them, but uh, we're only going to be going with 12 pitchers in the postseason anyways. So there wasn't a guarantee that he would even have made the 12-man staff. I think he probably would have, but I think with the guys like uh, Wenzel, uh, around we should be able to find 12 pitchers that we like other than that everyone is healthy so um, no serious injuries down the stretch obviously in a perfect world uh, we'd have the two-way player Juan Estrada with us uh, but we knew when he suffered that torn PCL back in May that his year was over uh, I think he could have definitely helped us on the pitching side and certainly he looked like he was really ready to kind of break out this year with a 307 batting average and a 430 on base percentage. So uh, having lost him as a two-way threat is a definite big loss for Buffalo, but we've been without him for four months at this point. And as we've talked about, we still put together the best record in baseball. So uh, no excuses. It's time for our Buffalo Wings to... Uh, not just get to the NLCS again, but uh, finally win a National League Championship Series in our hopeful fourth NLCS appearance. And then obviously if we get to the World Series, uh, we're going to want to win there. We've got the best record in baseball. We'll see if we can uh, close the deal finally in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.